Alright then everyone, so hello, and welcome back to another episode of Final Fantasy VI Blindfolded LLG. And this segment is the one where I have to get through Nikea, which is a very annoying town. It's just pretty much set up with all sorts of cramped spaces, tons of moving NPCs, NPCs I have to talk to. If, we, if town segments were bosses, this would be Final Kafka. Just calling it right here. <laughs> Alright, so all the way around. It's not too far a walk, and there's no one who can get my way there, and now I'm going all the way right. There's one NPC around here, and despite the large amount of walking room, she'll probably get in my way. I'm almost 90% sure of it happening. So, look forward to that. There we go. Into the inn. One, two, Hello, innkeeper. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, I'm sure there's a cheaper, faster, easier way to remove imp than to go to the inn, but this is good planning for my Brave New World route because I'm going to be doing the exact same thing there, so I might as well do... It's It ends up being easier just because I'm doing it the same way twice rather than trying to memorize two different ways, which would be harder even though... There we go. Door. It, it would be harder to memorize it two different ways, even if it would make it technically easier once, if you know what I mean. Alright, so writing down, and this is where the nice painless part of this segment gets to be over. Because now uh, I have to go through the huge NPC land down here. Full of very annoying people. I wish Kefka used the Light of Judgment on this town instead of Mobles. I mean, seriously. This town could have used it a lot more. Alright, so I probably made that just fine. Alright, so all the way to the left. I end up behind a pile of boxes there, so I, I don't end up making it as far as I might be able to, but walking back to the left here lines me up actually kind of nicely for the next uh, set of movements that I'm going to make, but this set of steps going down is when I have to start putting a ridiculous amount of safety on my movements because NPCs can get my way at any moment. It's really horrible. And there's so many, even the fast NPCs here can get in my way for a long time because there's so many other NPCs that sometimes they can all bunch up and clutter an area. And then even if an NPC is walking fast, they're probably trapped behind some idiot walking slow who probably should eat a little bit less McDonald's and get outside a little bit more often. see that delicious purple sky. Alright, so have I made it to this pile of boxes? And or, yeah, this is, these are barrels, not boxes. Actually, they're more like crates. Boxes would imply something a little bit less heavy duty, probably. Okay, so, I kind of thought of something last time, like, halfway through the last, well, time before that anyway, that if I try to talk that the, at the moment that I'm moving right, I might be able to get an indicator of whether I've talked to somebody or not, because then I can use my open my menu and see if it opens or not. Yes, that was successful. If it does that, it's certainly successful. The issue is, I'm not 100% sure it's a fail if my menu does not op open. So, it's not the greatest thing in the world, but... At least it can give me some peace of mind when it does work, so... And possibly a chance of recovery if it doesn't. Alright. 
So yeah, it's kind of hard to fill the time in a segment like this because I'm just spending a lot of time walking into stuff. There's not much I can do about that because if I try to walk into stuff less, I'm probably getting it nailed by the explosion of luck that is necessary because... I mean, even if there's a 90% chance of me making it somewhere on any uh, particular walk, which is pretty decent, I mean, you multiply that by the six or seven different times that I'm going to have to do this, and suddenly that chance becomes very low. I mean, not super duper low, but... Still low enough that I'm certainly not considering it. So, putting all the safety I can, putting 99.999% chance, and you can multiply that as many times as you want, well not technically in the theoretical sense, but you can multiply that an absurd number of times and still have it come out to a number that's decent, so. Alright, so I made it that time. Walk all the way down. It's actually the large majority of the times I have to do that. I have to take one step right at before, one step left after, and then I have to take one step back when I'm going back up, but other than that, every, all my movements should be these sort of... I can just put a lot of safety on it. Hopefully nothing will go abysmally wrong. I mean, theoretically in some cases I bet it's possible for an NPC to actually just gets stuck in my face, which is one concern that I had in the cafe with one of my older methods, the cafe. Because it was possible for an NPC to get stuck in the wrong place, but it's okay because my method now kind of uh, doesn't really have to deal with that. So I mean, hopefully I've made it to the bottom here, but I can't really tell for sure, so... That NPC, the, that one dude in the pink shirt, he walks really, really slowly, so I really don't want to mess around with that guy, because he can do just about anything. Alright, I think it's about time to go, probably. Crossing my fingers. Yeah, there we go. And now for the biggest pain in the butt in the segment. It's unlikely to actually make me lose the segment, but it is likely to take forever. Because I've got to walk in and out of this cafe five times and just hope that I talk to the guys. I mean, theoretically, the odds of me getting one of them in any, de in any attempt is pretty good. So five attempts should be really reasonable to get both of them just going in and out, and if they block my way, that means I talk to them, so it's good. We're all good there. But the fact that these guys are moving around just makes this painful in so many ways, on so many levels. If only I could uh, get away just by talking to the leader, that would be really nice, but it's just not going to happen. Alright, that's one trip in and out. Yay. Only four more to go. 20% of the way there, that's a F. I mean, even by the third attempt, it's only going to be a C minus, so. Just gotta repeat the same thing over again. Over again. It's like the Tintinabar quest, but actually less annoying. Thankfully, I didn't have to do that in the BFL OG. I did have to do it in Brave New World because their life belts are actually extremely important, but in the BFLLG, Tintinabar is kind of like scrub material and sort of a thing. It's sort of kind of useless because you really want to heal after every battle anyway, and not trust generally that you'll be boosted up to enough HP to just take on the next encounter. That can generally be a dangerous thing to do. Especially in an LLG, because I'm really not healing that much, and I really don't care that much about the cash uh, to fork out for a whopping tonic. Whopping tonic or three. But I do care about wasting, like, 20 minutes 
going back and forth to an injured soldier. And besides, it, it costs like 2,500 gil to begin with, so it doesn't even save money in the long run. It just wastes everything. Waste money, waste time, waste effort. This is in and out number three. Time to make it to that glowing C minus that I was looking for a while ago. It's nice how they both start right next to the entrance. Like, not right next to the entrance, but right next to that straight line that just comes up from the entrance. They're both like one step off, I think, at the start of their pattern. Which is what makes this actually fairly reasonable to go through. I don't have to rely on one of them walking across half the room and hopefully getting over to me. Just one step left, and they just happen to end up in my way. On the way back, the odds are a lot more complicated, but we'll roll with that. So that's like two one or four chances, probably about, every time I go into the room, so. And that's two out of one four. One, it's two one out of four chances for each of the guys, which is why I feel like five is enough to go in and out. This is time number four, right? I mean, I'm not concerned if I'm. It is time number five, and I'm forgetting because, I mean, it doesn't. It just wastes time, but it doesn't waste my chances of success. So. After these guys, those green guys and Zozo are going to be a pain too. <laughs> I mean, not Zozo, what am I talking about? Gogo's Lair. Zozo, Gogo, are kind of the similar noises. None of the people in Zozo were annoying, really. I've actually already figured out how to get to the Rust Red guy really easily, so... Oh yeah, that, that's what I was thinking of when I was thinking that third NPC but couldn't... Oh yeah, that was on a different run that I even mentioned that, so... Never mind that train of thought, but... the Another NPC that I'll have to talk to that's moving is the Rustred guy, but he's really easy to get to. I already figured it out the first time how to get him every single time when I walk through Zozo the first time, so... As long as nothing unexpected goes wrong. Like, there's actually two NPCs there, but I don't see why they'd waste an NPC slot to put a second Zozo NPC rather than just reuse them and use event bits to determine things that are important. It just seems like the obvious call, you know? <laughs> but you never know, sometimes the programmers of this game sometimes missed the obvious call, so... <laughs> can't completely trust. So, uh, I can finally start going somewhere again and not just blabbing my head off while walking into a wall and pressing the A button over and over again. Because, you know, that's fun. But necessarily evil, I guess, and this is the last really brutal town segment. I've got one more town segment directly after in South Figaro, but it should be long and easy sort of thing, rather than short and painful. That ends up being really long because I need to make sure nothing goes wrong. Alright, so walking all the way up. So I'll talk to this guy, just press the A button once so I can check if I'm in the menu. If somehow I got delayed walking right, and then ended up just walking up into the wall, that means I'll be able to tell. And you'll get to see me walk out of the building again, which I'm sure you loved all the other times I did it. But that shouldn't happen, because unless I was really slow on the mark that and got really unlucky, that guy over starts a few tiles down, just far enough for me to... pretty sure that I have to be able to take a step right from the start, as long as I'm quick enough on the draw. Alright, press that button. And menu is not opening, that's a good sign. That comforting Bernard noise. That's one guy out of the way. 
Now I walk all the way to the left. This part isn't uh, bad either yet because I'm still walking. I still get to walk all the way to the fall, and places I can do that are always my friend around NPCs because counting steps, you miss one, and you have no clue what's going on anymore. There's just nothing. Except in this case, it's going to be coming up right soon because. That should be enough, probably, to get across that short cafe with just a couple NPCs that aren't even moving sl too slowly. And this is like one step, so this should at least be okay. Alright, so talk. Good. That's what I'm looking for. There's my burner noise. Now, he leaves the cafe, but unfortunately the other thieves don't leave until I leave. What jerks. I mean, maybe they're going ladies first for Sless, I don't know. But, one, two, three. Alright, so this could either be a serious pain in the butt, depending on how much bad luck I get there, but it should not be able to end the run. And the reason is because I can check by trying to walk back in the cafe, and this will bear no negative consequences, really. Uh, like, it won't put move my position to somewhere weird that I'll never be able to figure out. It'll be completely... Alright, so now I open the menu. And now, if I'm outside, the door just closed. But, one of them got in my way. Which, in two runs that I've gotten here, that's not unexpected, so... Right, one. All the way down. And we can do it again. Isn't this cafe really, really repetitive? But again, nothing I can do about it, because if I try to do anything about it, this just becomes a ridiculous luck fest. And I do not want that. Alright. That should be long enough. Open my menu, close the door. Shoot. Well, now it's always the part where I gotta get at least a little antsy that something's going wrong. But hopefully, everything's working out as intended. The NPCs were just trolls. They can really do that sometimes, and they've done it like. <laughs> half a dozen times already over the course of this playthrough and ended runs because of it. I remember the one time in the Returns Hideout and the last attempt at this segment, but that one was more funny than anything because uh, it wasn't very far into it, so I wasn't losing much progress, so I don't really care. There we go. Good. Okay. Ah, oh, that was dumb. I didn't need to walk all the way down there. Alright, so now I can walk all the way back to the right. So, it's a good thing my backup strat came into play there. I mean, not a good thing that it came into play, but good thing I had it. It's like insurance. You get it, but you don't want to use it. Actually, I'm not even 100% sure it's analogous so much as almost literally insurance. The only thing I have to pay for it is my time. The only thing I have to fork over up the front is really the time to figure it out, which wasn't very long. Maybe like 60 seconds short, but considering I tend to wait like 30 seconds at the end of every single action in this place, 60 seconds figuring something out beforehand isn't that big a deal. The next segment's going to be so much nicer because it's just... One other thing about Town Segments 2 that really makes them a step above the other segments and dungeons and whatnot is that I don't get any battles that tell me where I am. Those nice friendly battles that are like... Uh, give me a very strong indicator a lot of the time of whether I'm on the right track or not. Okay, I probably waited enough time here. go. 
pretty sure I did that as intended. The good news is, even if I didn't, I should get an indicator reasonably soon. But, as I mentioned on my first run, this one isn't. This indicator isn't super helpful because I'm way off in the middle of nowhere and have no real clue where I am if I did this wrong. <coughs> and if I did this wrong, then I likely mean got bad luck, but. In this case, I mean, I've theoretically excised pretty much all the bad luck that could have happened there, so. Except for this up and right that's going to be coming up soon, but... So my plan is to talk to the armor shop guy to tell me where I am. I should probably match the A button a little bit slower this time around so that I don't buy any diamond shields that I don't need. <laughs> I mean, if there's one good result of the fact that I messed it up the first time, it's that maybe I can correct that little mistake. It's probably not an issue because I probably... So I'm not going to need anything super intense hardcore before I get the airship, and then I can farm on the belt, however long I want. Although it'll be a bit pa more painful in the world of Rune to farm on the belt because... It's, I'm going to be able to defeat a lot less encounters by holding A. I mean, that's kind of my, my thing for the belt grinding. It's a lot faster and easier just to die and restart and hold A the entire time rather than try to figure out what's going on all the time. Just save after every fight and it's the fastest way to belt grind. Here at least. And the other thing is I do actually take the blindfold off while I belt grind because if I'm holding A anyway. I could do that just as easily blindfolded. Might as well let myself see what's going on. Since it's not gonna affect a thing. Aha, there we go. Not gonna get me with your shenanigans this time, armor doofus. He's just too good a haggler, I think. I think he just tricked Sab and just Look at this great deal. Sabin's like, oh boy, Celeste, we gotta get this and Plus, is just kind of face palming and shaking her head, but unfortunately, Savin happens to be holding the cash right now, so just bad luck on that end. I mean, in my mini contest things, Savin has a pretty bad spending habits, <laughs> I must admit. He's blown the party funds in what, like three now? <laughs> three of them now? Maybe just two? Whether between gambling or... Again, theoretically, shouldn't he? I mean, who would he be gambling against besides Setzer? Set may be dumb in that, in my mini contest context anyway. But Setzer's the one being a real jerk by taking all the cash. Alright. These are short walks, but I still don't want to take the chance. This, is, this part's an improvement from what I did before. Uh, because this time I have a completely deterministic way of doing this. I just walk straight up, walk straight left, and walk straight down. Then I may get to Edgar, and then I just kind of back out the same way I came. Even though that's a completely unintuitive way to do it. It is definitely the safest way to do it. And, believe it or not, it saves me some difficulty later, because... Later on, I would normally be ahead of Edgar, get ahead of him, and then have to go back to him at a certain point, whereas now I don't have to do that. All the way left. Should probably have made it far enough. Yeah, the NPCs are thankfully a little bit less thick up here, because most of them start a little bit farther down, but that k one kid runs really fast, and there's a woman that starts fairly close to the top as well, so even up here, I can't really rely on anything, gotta, gotta put the safety on it. But it's just like building a bridge, you know, because it may be annoying. You might have to spend a little bit more resources to build the bridge properly, but 
you don't want to try to get just enough building materials to hold up a car because then if you're wrong or if you're wrong about something or if a heavy car comes along then you're pretty much hosed and start going down now probably going to lose your job get sued that sort of unfun stuff But I'll just do this segment here, do the segment the next time, get it out of the way. Alright, now hopefully I should be standing next to totally not Edgar here. Alright, right. Good, good, good. This time around, I. My menu is not opening up like a jerk. And now, uh, I'm now in this kind of weird position where I'm walking back the way I came, even though... Like, it's just strange circumstances that end up making me do this, because... There's no other reason why I'd end up at the bottom left of those sets of crates down there. Pretty sure it's crates on the left and barrels on the right. But then again, I imagined a completely fictional suit of armor in the Returner's Hideout, so... I can't really trust my memory sometimes. Sometimes it's... weirdly easy to... just throw in something that is completely wrong or isn't there, and feel like you're remembering it perfectly, but... you know, you're not. Even though these are some of the safest movements all segment, the farther you go into the segment, the more you don't want to lose it. I'm not going to start feeling safe until I get to South Figaro, because South Figaro is a very nice place. Charming locals, nice looking village, great amenities, good knife life. Uh, knife life? Oh wow, that's... A little bit more sadistic than I was going for, but, you know. <laughs> I'm just imagining, like, a, a fighting ring for just knife nuts everywhere, just <laughs> having random duels in the cafe or something. Probably enough. Let's start going right. I wish I had someone to talk to. I mean, like, not someone in real life to actually be directly talking to. Kinda got my mouth full talking to you. I mean, that just sounds weird, but... Kinda wish I had an MP... not an NPC, but a shopkeeper in the game at least to talk to that would be right along this route in a very convenient spot tell me nicely when I reach the end of a walking spree, but all the shopkeepers are hidden in corners, and all the other NPCs that I don't want to see hide nor hair of are all directly in the way, so... This town is just annoying in every way possible. Sometimes I could take extra steps to go and talk to a shopkeeper, but sometimes I worry that it would just be ad introducing more risk and not reducing it. Just for the sake of perhaps a little ease of mind. Down now. This is probably the most boring segment to watch if we exclude perhaps waiting for Sid to die and also perhaps Brave New World getting Life Bell. Those are the only two segments, I think, that are probably as bad as this one. But e even still, waiting for Sid to die didn't take half an hour. It took five minutes, though I probably misjudged it, but even still, it took five minutes. 
in comparison. There was a little bit more on the edges of the segment, too. Was there? Or did I just stop? I don't remember if I just stopped at Sid dying or if I did some stuff and... I'll have to look back at my notes on what parts are supposed to be parts of which segment. Because I'm not sure. This is a slightly longer walk too, so... Now I've got to take one painful step left at the end of this. Which could be bad because... This could be the one step where the NPC decides to get my way. Hopefully my NPC threat prevention measures should deal with that succinctly. This is probably the best spot to have that issue come up and to have my menu not open when I'm hoping it'll open. Because if that's the case, then I can actually check somewhat easily where I am. It's just gonna take, you guessed it, a little bit longer. See, so yeah, that's probably far enough now. Okay, that probably worked as expected. I can actually afford to put a little bit less safety on this one. A little bit less, because... I'm going to be talking to Edgar here, and that should tell me where I am. It's not like the other spot where if I do end up in the middle of nowhere and try to press right to get to Edgar, it, if, I, if I did it there then it and took off a little bit of safety for it, I'd end up in the middle of nowhere and then I'd be done for. If things went wrong, that is. Most likely it would all work out perfectly and have nothing go wrong, but... I can't have it trust it, my, that to happen nine or ten times in a row, so. There we go. Alright. Alright, so now, go down and left. And the thing about going down and left here is that the NPC that. the one NPC that's likely to get in the way somewhat is unlikely to send me into the wrong spot, and if he does... Yes, okay, good. Okay, I think I made it there. Now I'm feeling a lot better, I feel like I've probably got this in the bag now. <coughs> so now I walk straight down. Now jam through the text, don't need to menu trick because I'll be hearing the sounds of the seaside any second now. But yeah, even if that guy had somehow managed to walk in the exact wrong pattern of three steps that he'd need to to throw me into the corner, I actually knew how to recover from that one very easily, so... Unless he decided to take that exact wrong pattern of three steps and run into, then start getting in my way when I tried to recover then I would probably be in a state of confusion and... <coughs> but given how close to the end I was, I would have probably tried it two or three times before giving up. Let's be honest here. Okay, South Figaro, jeez. Out of that horrible, horrible cesspit of awfulness. F1. I don't think... Never would have probably thought a long time ago that I'd ever have any reason to hate that town so much, but I was wrong, so. Down one, left. The port's just kind of easy to envision somewhat, because you got the one set of uh, random goods lying on the side up there. Start one to the left of the dude, and walk over to the left, hit the staircase which I can go around quite nicely. So I exit, run into this random chimney here. I'm not sure how this chimney works exactly, if I'm remembering it correctly. It just seems like it's sticking out of the ground for no reason. I mean, maybe they have a fire pit in their basement. It doesn't make completely no sense, but... Down one, left. 
should probably have made it to the end soon. Yay, item number one. Item number two. Left one, down one. All the way to the left. So now I hit the dock again. At least I think I hit the, the dock is what I hit, but... Either way, now I can go up and left and reach this elixir. There we go. Now I walk all the way to the right, hit another building. See how much... Like, you, you, you can see the difference, too, probably, like, very easily, how much simpler this is. With the wide open areas and nobody to get my way. I feel like I'm rocketing through stuff here. I grabbed those three items because it's very easy to gr grab them on the way out, and it saves me a detour later on the next run. I'm not sure what exactly I'll need to do besides grabbing those items just yet. And we're out! There we go. Should still be on save because... Yes. Okay. Finally. 36 minutes to walk through a freaking town. My gosh.